Hello, everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. My sincerest apologies for the long uh, delay since the last video. I've moved across the country. Again! Yeah, I'm back on the East Coast. Again! Reasons will be forthcoming. Anyway, doesn't matter. We can finally start putting a lid on Leisure Suit Larry 7. So last time, we got Drew out of the way. She's super happy with us, but... All of that working and getting exquisites and the key and the luggage and everything was to get mold. Yes, mold was our grand reward for pissing off Drew irrevocably so she'll never talk. Actually, I don't think we ever even see her again. Never appears at the pool or maybe we lose access to the pool? I don't know. We'll go check that out. Anyway, um, so now we have... The majority of the uh, ingredients we need to finish the cooking competition. Might as well start getting that done. So using this instructions, we can make Venezuelan beaver cheese quiche. Uh, we have the kumquat. We have the mold to make the cheese. Well, what's missing is Venezuelan beaver milk. Which I believe can be found in one of these two holds. Now, so now that we have the key, we can go pretty much anywhere we want. I forget which one we went to for the luggage, so we'll find out in a minute. Nope, here they are. Here's the Venezuelan beavers. Now, I think if you look closely, we haven't even been there yet, but up above us, uh, directly above us, I think, is the bowling alley. And this beaver looks really drunk. But yeah, so they give these beavers trees and they carve them into bowling pins. And then these bowling pins are not cleaned off the ship. Now, let's, just so I can show you, here's the bowling alley. We'll get you in a second, Dilds. We see you down there. Mm. All right, so uh, here's how bowling works. Head on up to the alley. Now, you'll notice he hangs on to the ball for a quick minute. That is a really dirty conch shell. Should I bleed? No, that's fine. And we get to hang on to the ball for a second because you'll notice he kind of cleans his ball a little bit before he starts. That's important. But we don't do anything, so off we go. Let's see how we can do all on our own. Ah. Uh. Oh. What? That was weak. One shot is all you get. If you don't get a strike, you fail. So you have to get a strike every time or the game is over. Hence, if you go to the aft hole directly below the uh, the bowling alley. Cybersmith 2000. There we are. Now we see the beavers dropping off their somehow fully painted uh, bowling pins. I think we're missing a step. Oh, no, no, wait. No, the bowling pins are... I don't know. Whatever. So that's how it works. They just kind of zip right on up there through. But there's only one person bowling, so I don't know where all these belong. It is unlocked. But what would you do inside a hopper full of bowling pins? Now, if you remember what Peggy says, and I know you're hanging on to Peggy's every single word. She mentioned something about there was a powerful contact explosive between... It was two things. I, I know it was K, KZ Jelly... And I think it was the silicon lubricant. It might be deodorant. I can't remember. It was probably deodorant, but let's see if this works. That's slick enough already. No, so it was a it was a deodorant, which I don't think we found yet. So we'll keep this place in mind. But uh, let's go play the beavers a visit. The PMS bouncy is filled with these plastic beaver trails. Well, thanks for tailing off there. Rube Goldberg would have been proud. For that matter, so would Jeff Tunnell. But doesn't it seem like a lot of trouble just to automatically set bowling pins? All right, so anyway, let's head back down below. Now, the beavers, I believe, exist here for only one reason, because we need beaver milk. What in the hell are those two doing? Well, this one appears to be scratching. This one's drinking. This one's biting. Um... Maybe there was a joke that used to be here that was cut out or something. I don't know. That's one good-looking beaver. These jokes were probably a lot funnier back in the day when beaver meant... Never mind, let's keep on going. This door is unlocked. So, just as soon as you figure out what to do inside the cage, you'll be all set. I know exactly what we do. All right, beavers, line up. It's time for milking. If you think you're man enough, go ahead. That's the joke. They're all male beavers. Next. 
Was it good for you? That, that chomping sound. I just, I can't. Let me out. Anywhere but there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I should probably go to the kitchen where it would be necessary. Oh, that's a lot of beaver milk. It's the milk of beaver kindness. Was it good for you? All right, let's use that joke as many times as possible. Back to the kitchen with me. Okay, so I think this is the cheese maker, and I think if we use, uh, let me see, the the beaver milk, we need that. Get that in there. Once again, Larry, you're missing something. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. No, you're missing an ingredient essential to the cheese making process. Oh. Ah, oh, dread. I thought I had everything. What am I missing? This page contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese. The ingredients include beaver milk, as always, Got milk it. from the elusive Venezuelan beaver is much preferred. No problem. A pinch of salt, pinch of salt. rennet, for which lime juice may be substituted lime in juice. a pinch. Okay, I remember this. Now, there's only one place in the entire ship to get lime juice, and it's not the kitchen, and it's not even in the dining room, because there are no limes anywhere to be seen. So, we can go to the bar and have them mix up, uh, you know, they make lime rickies and all that kind of stuff, so they, they must have lime juice. Hey, uh, Johnson. How's it hanging, Johnson? <laughs> it's me, Larry. Hey, fella, what's your name again? Oh, well, you can call me Lar, or you can call me Larry, or you can call me Larry, <laughs> Larry Laffer, or you can call me Laffer, but don't call me Schmuck. Okay, oh, I can ask him about a gigantic erection. Uh, dare I? Oh, uh, Johnson, I want a gigantic erection. Well, talk to the captain, not me. No, I mean a drink. A cocktail. Oh, well, that'll take a while. Are you sure? Oh, I'll, I'll wait. No problem. Ah. Okay, well, we have just stumbled upon the only way to get Johnson away from this station. And you would think that we could, oh, we could just reach back there and take all the booze we want, and there must be some lime juice back there. Thanks. Nope. Why do you say thanks? Oh, you can actually wait. I spent too much time talking. I don't think the game mm. was even expecting Doesn't that. seem to work. No update. All right, let's do that again. Oh, uh, oh. Okay, so now head on out. Now, it's the only way we can get back into this dressing room. Come on in, honey. Come oh, on, no, not again. Way to go, Bill. Oh, yeah, I forgot I did that. Hey, loser. You want this drink you ordered? I'll charge it to your room. Thanks. Hey, my banana's all soft and flaccid with little brown spots. Sorry, bud. I only do drinks. <laughs> okay. Well, that little surprise behind us. Okay, let's have let's get one ah, more gigantic, yeah. you know. Oh. All right. Now they'll miraculously be gone. Okay. So now we can go and poke around inside the jugs dressing room and there is the aforementioned, well, first of all. Yeah, baby. All right, got to hear at least once. All right, that is a lot of hair product. Now that's a can of hairspray. <laughs> that's, the, that's okay, that's the line you want to go with. Now, I think there's also a radio here. We can listen to all the different songs from the game. Um, yeah, why not? Oh, wait, no. no. This is something else, this button here. What a surprise. You pushed an unmarked button. You hope nothing bad happens. Oh, okay, it's all come back to me. Yeah, that's important. Got away with another one. Okay, anyway, well, here's the radio. Let's see, he's got his daddy's eyes, other daddy's smile, big hair and tangled limbs, felt up and feeling blue, hairspray can't hold my love for you. Uh, let's see, get along little John, let's do that one. Oh, this is the, uh, the raunchy music from the library. This is, I don't know, all right, whatever, this'll do. Anyway, so we need this deodorant. The jugs left a can of spray deodorant on their dressing table. I know. 
You could take the deodorant, but shouldn't you leave something in its place so they don't notice? This is the only time in the game where the game gets really, really... They, they don't want you to mess this up. So, oh boy, we gotta really think back now. So the way that we sort of solve, quote unquote, finger quotes in the air, the jugs, is they mentioned that the reason they're in hiding is because there was some sort of chemical reaction between the silicon lubricant they used, which I have, which bottle looks exactly like that, hint, hint, uh, and a heat source, which caused some sort of incident. So we can kill two birds with one stone. So we're gonna use that with the, not the lube, the silicon lubricant. Sneaky idea. The jugs will never notice. The two cans look almost identical. So now they'll spray themselves with the silicon lubricant instead of the deodorant and hilarity ensues. Tread on me. Yes, I will very heavily. The jugs have many styles of shoes, all of them boots. Obviously, the jugs have more clothes than you've seen them wear. This gun rack is a perfect opportunity for me to tell you Al Lowe's favorite cell line for this game. It's even more like Mist than Doom. Yeah, pretty good, huh? Yes, marketing thought it sucked too. <laughs> <laughs> Little insider into the politics at Sierra Online. Now, honestly, the one thing I can't take a look at are these really awesome, like, bouncy saddles with the hair dryers and stuff. That's really cool. I can look at the mirror, though. That's not a mirror, just a shadowy reflection of one. I don't get it. Each of their songs is on a separate disc. One disc is titled, Get Along, Long John. Each of glove compartment panties. <laughs> I just love hearing him say it in a southern accent. You got into my bra, but not into my heart. All right, well, we already saw all the songs in there, so it's not Your a big deal. Please. All right, so we're back out. We got our drink, and the button looks like it lowered this uh, lighting platform. And we can fiddle with it, as we can with many things, after button pressing is taken care of. This is the follow spot used for stage shows. All right, that's pretty, that's pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. So let's take that. Hmm, let me just ease this. Oops. Fragile. Anyway, we're gonna replace it. Uh, take, can, uh, can I just like stick my finger in it? How many Sierra software engineers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh, I I've heard this one. Two, right? But how could they fit inside? Nope. None. It's a hardware problem. Da 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 da. All right. We're going to put in the. Wow, oh, I forgot all these stupid verbs I had to put in. Uh, can we lick it? Licking is not the answer. Doesn't that depend on the question, Smart Alec? Oh, he's got you there, buddy. All right, so we're going to put the heat lamp in there. That's a sneaky idea. The bulb fits. It's the right voltage, but won't it make the stage uncomfortably warm? All right, so the two things that need to fall into place for the jug solution, quote, 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 is the silicon lubricant and a heat source. So when the show starts, things will get a little bit more interesting. Anyway, now, lime juice, please, Johnson. Ah, if it isn't my old friend, the mixolo... Uh, the mixol... The mixol... Uh, mi mixol... The bartender. Yeah, right. You want a drinker, don't you? Uh, excuse me, Johnson. I want a glass of lime juice. No. Why not? We don't serve just lime juice. And why not? Cause it ain't on the menu. Oh, it ain't, ain't it? Nope. And if it ain't on the menu, I ain't serving it. Well then, how about you make me a Lime Ricky, Johnson? Is that on your menu? Yeah. Okay. One Lime Ricky, coming up. But leave out the gin, okay? Okay. Virgin. And leave out the soda water, okay? Okay. And leave out the sugar, okay? Okay. And leave out the friggin' eyes, okay? Why, you? And make it snappy. Here, bugger up. 
<laughs> I kind of like that solution, and it's uh, it sounds like a reference to a Jack Nicholson movie or something, but I don't know. Okay, so I think that's everything we need to do here. So if I think if we enter into this area and then come back, the jugs will do those things. But we'll, we'll save that for the finale of this little episode. So let's go back to the kitchen, which is here. And now I think there's everything we need for the cheese. Let's see. Some beaver milk. This mold scraped from my shower wall. A pinch of salt. And this lime juice. Oh, yeah. And voila! Venezuelan beaver cheese. Oh, it's hairy. Pee you! That stuff stinks! Cybersniff 2000. Oh, God. I'm glad I don't have my card. Okay, so now, let's see, what else do we have to do? So now we have the cheese, now we have to make it into a quiche. So we slice the kumquat. I remember that. So let's so use carving knife. Get that done. You set the cute little kitchen timer for exactly 55 minutes. Mix the kumquat into your pot of beaver cheese, throw in a few more things you find lying under the kitchen counter, then place the entire mess in a clean baking dish and slam it in the oven. Well, okay. A baking dish. Right. Hey, that doesn't smell half bad. No, it smells all bad. Well, that looks like it went well. Your attention, please. Slim and Slime have just won the Moat Olympics. Way to go, fellas. Hey. High five. Hey, a Torrance Passage reference. Slim and Slime in the Moat Olympics. They really like to push that game, but still just a little bit too cutesy for me. Now, the only thing I don't like is after you do the, um, the kumquat explosion here, Cookie Puss melts and... Where's Fifi? Larry? You didn't put the dog into your quiche, did you? You're looking at me with that look, Larry. I don't trust you. But there is some more new stuff laying around. Why did a pig and a python show up now? Artistic license. I got a point for looking at that. Mmm, cookie puss. Uh oh. Now I see the entire reason, the cookie puss payoff, we call that. Now the cone and the two eyes look like a big old hackenbosch. It's your culinary masterpiece, Venezuelan beaver cheese and kumquat quiche. Better hope your personal liability insurance is paid up. All right, I'm going to save here because there's a special ingredient we need to add to the quiche in order to make it a winner. But uh, let's give it to the judges now and see what happens. Oh, there he is. Look at him. He's all shy about his creation. Proudly, you present your concoction for evaluation by the panel of esteemed chefs. The scorecard, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Laffer. Well, let's see now. Oh. <laughs> I just think she likes it. Well, this has nothing to distinguish it from the hundreds of other Venezuelan beaver cheese quiches we've endured. Although the essence of kumquat does help slightly. <laughs> Slight. What? I don't even want to bother tasting it then. Wait, I might want to try. No, never mind. <laughs> oh! I've never seen that scene before. So, is that is it gone from my inventory? No, I still have it. Oh, okay. So it's not game over if you just give it to them and they eat it because they don't eat it. All right, so let's spice it up a little bit. Can I eat it? Well, a little taste couldn't hurt. It's good, right? It smells awful good. No, it just smells awful. <laughs> we put the awful in. Awfully tasty. All right, so let's spruce it up a little bit with this orgasmic powder that we got from our misadventure with uh, Doomy. Hmm, this ought to spice it up a little. 
Tokyo. Now it's sparkling. Quiche de la Rue. While ordinary Venezuelan beaver cheese and kumquat quiche may be considered delicious, your new improved version packs an extra special punch of orgasmic powder. Cybersmith 2000. Now eat it now. A tiny drop in your drink knocked you for a loop and now you want to eat this? No way. No way. Okay, that's probably pretty smart. All right. Chef Julia, enjoy my quiche de la rue. There it is. Proudly, you present your special enhanced concoction for evaluation by the panel of esteemed chefs. Um, scorecard, please. Julia, you have many talents, ventriloquism amongst them. You, Mr. Laffer. Well, what do we have here? I'll have what yes. she's having. Well, delightful. Hey, wait for me. Well, well I have. <laughs> 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 you may not know much about cooking, but you know what they like. Look at those scores. I you can't. just won the cook-off competition. Oh my! Well, Larry, at least you legitimately got a couple of people that. Uh, uh, never mind. All right, we won the competition. Your attention, please. Larry Laffer has just won the cook-off with a record high score of 300 points. Congratulations, Larry. Everyone wants a copy of that recipe. I bet. Okay, Um. now I think... Yeah, this will probably be a double whammy episode because I think I need, we have everything we need to finish the best dressed man competition um, with, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, oh, I can't think of her name right now. And uh, something else. Oh, yeah, the jugs. We got to go watch the jug show. Let's go to, let's go get the cloth we need first. Is this a good idea? <sighs> What do you want? I'm busy! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, nothing. You get your ass back in here right now! You've got work to do! Okay, I gotta oh, uh, go. Mm. And get the Mazzola oil! <laughs> there it is! There's the scene I've been trying to get. That's the other scene where you can insert your own voice and, uh, and picture at the same time. That's great. So, let's uh let's rewind that. That was the Aolo classic version. Let's do this our way. Is this a good idea? Grunt. Groan. What do you want? I'm busy. Oh. Whoa. Uh, nothing. You get your ass back in here right now. You've got work to do. Okay, I got ya. Oh, uh, go. Hum. And get the Mazzola oil! Much, much better. It also makes it look like winning the Theisman Trophy Award isn't kind of all it's cracked up to be. It's kind of death by snoo snoo. Captain Thigh's whiteboard graphically displays the relative progress of the leading contestants in her Theisman Trophy race. You know, you just might be able to pull this one together, Larry. Oh, I wonder if it says something different every time you come back and you're in a different position. Interesting. Anyway, no, I didn't come here for that. Well, kind of did. We came here to go exploring. Uh huh. Over here. It's just a public address speaker. That's where you hear all those announcements. Now, whenever there's like a big long line of pipe and something and something that leads way over there, you know it's something that we have to pay attention to. This appears to be some sort of electrical box. Heaven only knows what it controls. The radar, the satellite link, the dirty movie channel in your cabin. I've got dirty movies? Well, no, you don't. Aww. The white zone is for loading and unloading only. Nice touch out actually kind of moves when you do it. Can I go in here? Oh. Hi, doggy. Hi, dildes. Yeah, baby. 
Oh, they're trying to advertise the Wii over here. Or the Wii. Or the E Wii. Also, I like how no one's actually driving the ship because Captain Thigh is way back there somewhere. Uh, and it, yeah, it's cute. The bridge is filled with complicated equipment, instruments, computers, and a bungee cord. I don't like dogs. Hmm. I forgot about this. What would a dog want? Mm. All right, I can't do anything while the dog's here, and I completely forget how to get rid of the dog. So, we'll come back to this. What's up here? Oh, the sail, right. The sails are made from white polyester. Just like your leisure suit, Larry. Uh, leisure suit, Larry? Hey, that's me. <laughs> We're going to need some of that for the best dress competition. Long story, we'll come back to it. What's that island down there? It's a good thing you're not afraid of heights. It's a matter of opinion. All right, so there's two things we need to find the screwdriver for, and I completely forget where to find it. It would make sense it's inside of the employees only area. Did I miss it? Where's the screwdriver? I don't remember ever running to this problem before. I remember. Uh, it's kind of obtuse, but we knocked down all the, the dice and everything, but we never actually explored up here. We can actually climb the scaffolding. There we go. There's the screwdriver. Can I take the hammer too? This toolbox is filled with all the tools your modern dice sculptor needs. There once was a screwdriver right on top. And uh, this spike here... This is kind of a cool little uh, mechanic because if you look at the map, so here we are, and then like directly above us, more or less, is the horseshoes competition. And if you look at the horseshoes, here's the spike right here. And the spikes just go directly through the ceiling here, which I think is kind of cute. It's like, oh, we should probably put something else up there. It's like, didn't really think about it. It's kind of cute. From up here, it's easy to see a large steel spike has been driven right through the ship's deck from above. The only reason you want to feel that is because you expect to hear something about long and hard, right? Sorry! Yeah, this is the one time you'll let us down. Okay, so now that we have the screwdriver, there's a couple of things we can do, but let's go ahead and stay on the course where we were. Good idea. Let's see what's in there. There we go. So it's the fuse box for the sail and the loudspeaker. So. If we use the, where was it? The jumper wire. Hmm, what if I just connected, say, these two circuits together? Yeah, that shouldn't cause any problems, should it? <laughs> and I'm no electrical engineer, but I believe what happens now is that every time the loudspeaker goes off, it makes the sails go up and down. And the dog in the room over here, I don't think actually does ever go away. You, so you can't raise the sails automatically or by yourself. You have to, I, okay, so it's cute, I get it. So the dog actually never goes away, nifty. There we go, so now they've done a, a loudspeaker announcement and now the sail's up, it's great. So now I think we could just use our carving knife to get ourselves a nice big swath of the stuff. There we go. Blah. Don't forget. Oh, oh no, Bob, oh, no, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Midnight Buffet will be in the restaurant until 3 a.m. Then a few hours later, join us on the boot deck for sunrise Ow. breakfast. Ow. And of course, at 10 a.m., we have brunch in the restaurant. Use your knife, fool. The Ow. Nude pool Ow. And 4 p.m. tea in the lower lobby. And all that is in addition to our three Ow. regularly Ow. scheduled meals. So don't forget. Oh, hope he makes another day. announcement Please. quick. So I can get out of here. And that's the last announcement for this evening. Ow. Good night Ow. and pleasant dreams. Oh. You've got the Ow. knife in your pocket. Use it. It looks kind of comfy in there. It must be warm. No, he's still awake. Actually, I'm not sure how breathable polyester is. Can, can you, are you alive in there? There? Oh, boy. I used to think if you were fast enough, you could actually catch that little dilds down there. Hey, 
but and that would be like the, the race, secret missing one. I always thought it was so clever, but never worked. Okay, well that was a fun little adventure. So now that we have the uh, polyester, we can head right back down into the ballroom and then, oh, hey. Yeah, baby. Uh, hi, Jamie Lee. I'm back again. Oh, bonjour, Larry. Uh, bone, yeah. Uh, anything come up while I was gone? <laughs> Nothing, unfortunately. Jamie, honey, I got it. The solution to your problem is right before your eyes. All white, but not too bright. Lightweight, but durable. Artificial and wrinkle-free. Vu? What? Oh, not me. Polyester, the leisure suit. It works for me. It's a classic look. It stood the test. It's still the best. What? Oh, we. Oui. Great. Although retro is in, and fashion has done crazier things. And really, when you come right down to it, ain't fashion just convincing people old ideas are new? Making people desire the crap they just threw away? Sacre bleu, Larry! It just might work! And the best thing is, I'll make that asshole Calvin Clone look like Z Fool. Say uh huh. Happening. Oh, but wait. It's impossible. We're in the middle of the ocean here. The press is already aboard, and I have no polyester fabric. Well, I could fax an order to chopper it aboard. No, there's no way. But I do have my best seamstresses here. No, oh, they're just for last minute alterations. There's no way they could stitch up a whole new line overnight without fabric. Eh, maybe next year, if I even have a next year. Got it. Okay, so I guess you have to introduce the uh, the idea of leisure suits, which is kind of a cool little obtuse idea. It was just sort of sitting there. I don't know how it got there. Maybe I, I must have missed it. So that's the missing link we were looking for. So here you go, Jamie. Here is all. I'm going to give it directly to your chest. Here you go. All the polyester cloth you want. Here, Jamie Lee. I just dropped in from the Midnight Fabric Store. Get out of here. That's fat, yo. Now, quickly, take off your clothes. Hey, this is working out better than I planned. Well, okay, but you will respect me in the morning, won't you? <laughs> Move your ass, yo. I got no time for chatting. I need that leisure suit for a pattern. Oh, I thought, <clears throat> well. Oh, and give me that underwear, too. What? Why? No time to explain. Oh, no, here we go again. I think that was solely for the reason, so I have to make it back to my room. Just a little farther. This time I'm gonna make it for sure. Well, shiver me timbers! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh. Well, it looks like somebody's already shivered that poor little timber. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, it was, wow! It was the like one sentence she did without swearing. Your attention, please. Would the person who borrowed the ship's lifeboat please return it? You may keep the first aid kit, and no questions will be asked. All right, I was about to think he was gonna. Hey, well, the person who stole most of our sail uh, kind of report to the office a little bit. All right, so there's like two things we can do right away, and I promise you guys a double whammy. So we're gonna do it. So first things first, let's go back and see Jamie Lee, and we should be all ready to go for the uh, the fashion part of the evening. Oh, what's this? Larry, meet me backstage, Jamie. All right, finally. All right, back we go. Never what you think. She left these unlocked. Here I come, baby. Jamie, Jamie Lee. No one's seen me yet. <laughs> so be far, this so a lot. good. Uh oh. Next on Inside Affair, the Lust Boat. Is that Torin with the camera? What? He's even got the bag. They are really riding heavy on that one. Okay, so now that 
we are now the best dressed person on the ship because she just introduced this whole new line of leisure suits. So if we stop in real quick to the best dressed competition. Let's just see what this guy Somehow does. this mm, has instant what a results. Place to hide a card reader. I don't know what this computer does and how it's hooked up to it, but apparently this, even though this style has never left this cruise ship, uh, is has already taken the world by storm. Your score is 100. Whoa, 100. A perfect score. Cool. You hunk. Ah, the irony. You haven't changed a whit, yet you now precisely match the latest fashion trend. But give those designers a few months, soon enough, you'll once again be unhip. All right, that was done. Your attention, please. Larry Laffer has just won the best dressed bad portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 100 points. Congratulations, Larry. The world of fashion will never be the same. Sorry to hear that. All right, and let's test that theory. If we look at the whiteboard, if it says something different now that I've moved up a notch. Captain Thigh, your cheating has served you well. Now just don't get caught. Ah, it does. Look at that. A couple more people dropped out. All right, Steve's hot on my heels, but I think we can do this. All right, as a finale, let's go up and check out the Jug Show. Should be uh, revealing. The first time that I saw his face is when I realized he's got his daddy's eyes and his other daddy's smile. Thank oh, y'all and God bless. Thank you so much. And now. We need a volunteer for the unplug part of our set. Who wants to play with our jugs? Wow. <laughs> Why, wow. looky here, Mama. A volunteer. Howdy, buckaroo. <coughs> Pardon us while we whip these out. <gasps> Blazing Saddles joke. <sighs> hey, Johnson. How about some of that special lighting? Uh-oh. There's the red light. And I don't think they ever do their show if you don't uh, give them the silicon lubricant. Whew. Why don't you, honey? Is it hot in here? Oh, mama, I'm a getting that feeling again. Grab him. This time I've got to make it without running into somebody. That was I can't so be that unlucky. Let's never mention that again. <laughs> okay. Well, this has been a very eventful episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I feel dirty. So with that being done, um. We just need to finish tail deck bowling, which I think we have everything we need now. And I think, oh, we also will soon have everything we need to finish up the poop deck horseshoe. So yeah, we're, uh, we're getting pretty close. And now that we have the screwdriver, we can head back down to Exquisite's little special area and use the screwdriver and finally figure out what's up through this hidden vent. But we'll save that for next time. So until then, as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night. From the East Coast.